In the House committee investigating the January 6th attack is getting ready to hear from a key witness while the fight over another continues. CNN has learned Jeffrey Clark, a former Justice Department official who pushed the big lie and was a central player in Trump's effort to overturn the election results in key states, is expected to testify next Friday. He would be the first Trump administration official to comply with a subpoena, unlike Steve Bannon, who is now facing possible criminal prosecution for refusing to testify. Lawmakers believe the former Trump advisor has critical information pointing to a comment he made on his podcast the day before the riot. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. Just understand this. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's not going to happen like you think it's going to happen. Okay, it's going to be quite extraordinarily different. And all I can say is strap in. And yet only nine House Republicans would join Democrats this week in voting to hold Bannon in contempt of Congress. There was even some drama on the House floor when Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene confronted two members of the January 6th committee, Liz Cheney and Jamie Raskin, waving her hands and calling the vote on Bannon a joke. Now, I went up to the Hill to ask Marjorie Taylor Greene about that moment, and here's what she told me. And what about that confrontation with Congresswoman Cheney? Why did that happen? She's a traitor. She's a traitor? Yeah. How can you say that? Crazy. We then caught up with Green a second time, and I asked her why she would not hold Bannon in contempt. What was the rationale behind your vote? The rationale behind my vote is I'm not self-absorbed like the rest of these jerks here in Congress. They're all ignoring inflation. People can hardly buy food. Gas has gone up. Jerks, if you Gas don't mind is it. because they're self-absorbed. All they care about is Congress. They don't care about the American people that there pay all the taxes. On, the all you want to talk about is, is your Trump derangement syndrome. And all you want to talk about is Why January 6th where there's a riot Steve here. Bannon? Why protect Steve Bannon? Because I care about American people. The interview ended soon after when fellow Republican Congressman Pete Sessions of Texas walked into the middle of our conversation. So, you doing okay? I'm Let's doing get great. out of here. Okay. But not Thank Steve you. Bannon. Hey, what about all the people that are rotting in jail? Why don't you worry about them? And that was that. Democratic Congresswoman Madeline Dean of Pennsylvania joins me now. She's the vice chair of the House Judiciary Committee. Congresswoman, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, what's your reaction to those remarks we just heard from Marjorie Taylor Greene? Well, sadly, I've had uh, to put up with Marjorie Taylor Greene a bit this week. She came in and observed uh, while we had Merrick Garland in front of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, to me, it's as though she's auditing Congress. As you know, she has no committee assignments. Uh, she's not based in the fact or the truth or any sense of the rule of law any sense of the institution of Congress. Uh, those who voted against uh, the resolution to hold Steve Bannon in contempt are literally voting against their own interests, against the institution of Congress, against our subpoena power as a co-equal branch of government. So uh, Ms. Green is sadly uh, very misled, uh, does not understand literally uh, her oath of office uh, or what democracy is all about. And Congresswoman, I don't want to spend too much time on her, but are you concerned um, about being around her, about your colleagues being around her? What do you make of this? I mean, she has this confrontation with Congresswoman Liz Cheney uh, and Congressman Jamie Raskin. Uh, this seems to happen so much. Oh, yes, and she uh, frequently comes into committees without a mask, has to be told to put a mask on like she's a child. Uh, so it's disturbing. That's exactly what it is meant to be. She is seeking the hot spotlight uh, through negative attention. And uh, small people like that uh, need to be ignored more. Uh, we have really important business to do in Congress. You see, gov you see Democrats doing just that, whereas the majority of Republicans are disregarding the rule of law. Uh, they would move forward and defund our government. They would allow us to default on our obligations, and they pull stunts like that as they continue the big lie. Democrats, on the other hand, were governing. And I also caught up with the uh, GOP Congressman Chip Roy, uh, asking him to explain why he voted with uh, the vast majority of Republicans to oppose the uh, criminal contempt uh, uh, motion for Steve Bannon, and here's what he said. We just ask you why you decided not to vote. 
because the entire commission was a sham set up in the beginning. You know, what if but, you're back in the majority and you issue subpoenas? Does that mean people can just ignore this? They commit you, but the premise is all wrong. I have no idea any of the debates or discussions that have occurred in this committee, and it's based on a committee that was structured to be a political committee from the very beginning. That's how it was set up. That's the problem. You undermine the rule of law when you don't have the foundational principle to start with it. I mean, just to recap there, Roy says that the lawmakers, our lawmakers are in investigating a domestic terror attack, are undermining the rule of law, uh, not the man ducking a subpoena in that investigation, meaning Steve Bannon. Um, how do you make sense of that? You can't. You literally cannot make sense of it. Uh, that whole argument was incredibly upside down, as were the words of Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's as though we're looking in some clown mirror. Uh, and so, again, we are up against some very serious issues. The protection of our democracy is incredibly important. We saw how fragile our democracy became uh, under Donald Trump as he spread disinformation and distrust over our elections and so many other things, not to mention spewing indecency and bigotry uh, and hate, frankly. Uh, so those whom you just interviewed uh, really disregard and disrespect the institution. Uh, they don't seem to even understand what we are here for. We have an obligation to get at the truth. We have an obligation to find out what happened. Mr. Bannon, for example, I call him a bit player, but certainly he's a player. He has information as to what was going on in the days and planning before January the 6th and what was going on on January the 6th and beyond, because we know this threat is not over. And so we need people to come forward. What I think those two Congress people should have done was should have said, of course Mr. Bannon needs to come forward. And in fact, I'll come and testify before the January 6th committee. I will tell you everything I know, because I know this is about something much bigger than me. It is about our democracy and what we leave for the next generation and the generation after that. They should all want to come forward. Do, do you have any confidence that, uh, that Steve Bannon will be forced compelled to testify, testify by the Justice Department uh, that it's going to get to that point? Uh, do you think that's going to happen? I do. Uh, this is a very different world with a new administration, and an administration that uh, understands the rule of law, understands the separation of powers uh, between the executive and the Department of Justice. And of course, this is a very different attorney general. Attorney General Barr was just a puppet uh, for Trump. Uh, and so this attorney general is independent, uh, is thoughtful. I believe they will move swiftly. They understand the urgency of this. Uh, and so Mr. Bannon will be forced to come forward and to testify. He, of course, has the chance to take the fifth in limited circumstances. Uh, but he can't just flout the rule of law, can't just flout a, a legal congressional subpoena. As I said, he needs to come forward. I'm delighted uh, Mr. Clark will be in front of the committee. You're going to see people come forward and be forced to tell us the truth. Again, for the purpose of making sure we hold accountable those who were involved in the insurrection, including uh, the President of the United States, but much more importantly, that we never see it happen again. All right, Congressman Madeline Dean, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.